what Slide in the Woods hides from the player off camera. Slide in the Woods is a short and sweet indie horror game that has the player continually go down a slide in the middle of the woods. You've probably seen some of your favorite Let's Players freaked out by the experience. As you go down the slide over and over again, things get a bit dark, and the slide we are sliding down warps us to a dark dimension. So how did the developer pull this off? Well, let's take a look because there's a lot of neat things to see and, uh, you know, break. And if you like seeing horror games completely dissected by yours truly, Swankybox, subscribe now because I do this pretty often. For starters, one of the most interesting aspects about this game is how the world evolves and transforms while the player's vision is restricted. We're often inside the slide when the world around us is changing. So what we can see is limited, but you'll notice that if we could see outside the slide, that the world simply is altered once the player can no longer see anything. Once the night hits, the darkness definitely helps hide some things. So we're going to brighten it up. Now you essentially rinse and repeat with this game until you see a body up top. And this is what that actually looks like up close with the darkness removed. The demonic arms that come out and grab the person are actually just that, a pair of arms without a body within the slide. There isn't any point in modeling anything more because the player would never be able to see it. Plus, it'd be easier to move something long and slender down the pipe instead of animating a whole character. You can even see this without messing with the game if you simply turn around in the slide. You'll see the arms load in when you get to the middle. But now I know you're all curious about how the slide eventually grows, and this is how it looks. So once we follow the body down the slide, the game unloads the map's floor and the slide now extends way beneath the map. As we make our way to the bottom, you can actually see the escape tunnel that we later use to get out of here. All of it stems from this weird temple in a different dimension. This game is normally dark considering it's a horror game, but brightening up the place lets us see a bit more of the temple. The only thing we can really do though is climb the stairs up to the top. At this point, the player is supposed to lower a pulsating bag of what is assumed to be bodies into a giant well. And by doing this, a monster then is summoned. I try to get a closer look at the monster, but the pause button doesn't actually stop the monster at all, so you'll die either way. The well in the center of the room goes down for quite a long way, and even though we can hear the people screaming, the bag simply stops down at the bottom. Again, this makes sense, since the player can't actually see this. Back up top, we can see the killer creeping towards the entrance of the door from outside. He peeks in for a bit as the exit opens up, but if we aren't fast enough, he will come in and kill us. At this point, I wanted to try something. First, what would happen if we summoned the killer, but left the room? The room normally won't let you out of the door, but if we teleport the character out, we can hide on the stairs. The killer will just spawn in front of us and slowly walk to the door. Their face is designed to always look at us though. However, if the killer cannot find the player inside, he never actually walks through the door. Instead, he charges at us outside and kills us. Trying this again, I try to flee down the stairs in hopes that I can outrun the killer. So I get to the bottom of the staircase as he spawns in, and I just wait, hoping I'm safe. But unfortunately, this doesn't work too well either. There's a failsafe in place that either auto kills a player after a certain amount of time, or if the killer can't reach them, or so it appears. So I hear a scream, and I just die. But what about the slide chase scene? Normally, when we make it out of the temple, you enter another slide area where the killer chases after you. So what if we were to get behind the killer? Well, he just turns around and kills us. Apparently, the slide physics don't affect him. And even if we decide to start the slide and warp into the sacrifice room, we will still die as soon as the killer reaches the door in the tunnel and doesn't know what to do. But there's still one more thing to show off, and that's how all of this seamlessly loops back to the playground. After outrunning the killer, you find yourself in a room with a slide again. But this is actually what it looks like outside of the room. The stone room is right where the top of the slide used to be, and the tunnel took us back to a copy of the map. When we go down the slide, you can even see the rest of the slide load in for a second before it unloads and the game ends. Quite a neat way to make this thing go full circle. But anyways, that's Sly in the Woods, but broken. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what other games you'd like to see me break, and I'll see you all soon on Horoscoped. Cheers!